It is Wednesday, the 4th of May, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Have you ever heard the saying, your God is too small? I think it might have been the title to a book, or at least it's been quoted a lot. Your God is too small. What does that mean? Well, I think sometimes it means that we just don't think big enough when it comes to our relationship with God, the power that God has in our lives. The story appointed for today is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. It is the call of Isaiah the prophet, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament, a prophet who is quoted over and over and again by Jesus himself. Isaiah, in the year that King Uzziah died, chapter 6, verse 1 says, has a vision, and he says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. And listen to this, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Now, the temple in ancient Israel was not a small building. Solomon had constructed one of the great wonders of the ancient world. It was opulent and it was large. Into that largesse, into that big building, Isaiah's vision sees that only the hem, the little fold at the bottom of a robe, only the hem of God's robe filled the whole temple, which means that 99% of God wouldn't fit, wouldn't fit in the temple where people came to worship God. The vision tells us that seraphs were in attendance above him, uh, six-winged creatures who are heavenly beings. And they sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. God is that big as well. The whole earth is full of his glory and his glory extends beyond even that. Isaiah looks and he sees that the doors, the pivots, the hinges of those doors on the threshold shook when their voices cried out. And overwhelmed by this vision, Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live in a people of unclean lips. Yet somehow I have seen a vision of the Lord and what he doesn't say, but he means is, and I'm left alive. For to encounter a God this big, this awesome, this amazing, could just leave you dead. I imagine Isaiah is looking for a hole to crawl in so that he can hide from the overwhelming glory and splendor of God. Then we're told that one of these seraphs, one of these heavenly creatures, flies to the altar and takes up a hot coal. With this burning coal, it flies to Isaiah and touches his lips. It's an act of purification. The man who says, I have unclean lips, is now purified with the heat from the altar. And as it's said, forgiveness is pronounced. Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Forgiveness brings us into the presence of a God who is so big we cannot imagine it. it. That's what's happened on the cross, where we encountered a God who was just too big for our minds, too big for our hearts, too big for this world, so big, in fact, that we had to put God to death on the cross. So now that we've been cleansed, now that our lips have been touched by the very sacrifice of Christ himself, now that we've been made clean, the question is, what do we do with that? And it's the same thing in the Isaiah text today. Isaiah, after he's been told that he is now cleansed, hears a voice that says, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah, maybe without even knowing where the words come from, says, here am I, send me. I don't think Isaiah probably felt that he was worthy of this. Only what God had done for him had made him worthy. I'm not sure Isaiah even wanted to do this. The, 
the role of a prophet or a speaker for God in the people of Israel is a hard one. And yet, what if you do when you've been confronted by a God so immense that the hem of his robe fills the temple? What do you do when you've been cleansed by this God and then God says, who do I send? What else can you do but say, here I am, send me? Let us pray. God, the gifts you give us on the cross and in the resurrection are more than we can imagine. You are more than we can ever begin to comprehend. But even as immense as your presence is in this world and beyond it, you come to us and you say the words given for you, shed for you, you are my child. And then you ask us, Lord, whom shall I send? Give us the courage, Lord, to answer, full of your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.